one of the more embarrassing losses I can ever remember in the regular season for the Texas basketball program last night. Yes, I'm probably being dramatic, but yes, I 100% mean everything I just said. You are Locked On Longhorns, your daily podcast on the Texas Longhorns. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Longhorns, the show, Jonathan Davis, your host. Today's episode of Locked on Longhorns is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. On today's episode of Locked on Longhorns, we are talking about the Iowa State Texas game last night. The Longhorns lost 70 to 65 on their home court in what essentially was a must win game with their tournament hopes on the line. All of that and more on today's episode of Locked on Longhorns, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day day so today's going to be a shorter episode right i really did not have the energy to record i really did not want to record today right y'all know when i don't want to record i just don't record right but i uh definitely could not just sweep under the rug what we saw last night and there was no way that i could not address the debacle that we witnessed last night in the moody center you know i said i might be you know being dramatic i don't really care right that's one of the most embarrassing and disappointing losses in the regular season i can remember uh for this texas longhorns program right and to me, it weighed so much with everything on the line, right? Coming off of an elite eight run, you're now in a position where halfway through conference play, every game is essentially a must win, right? You're on the bubble in terms of making the NCAA tournament or not. And I just thought like with that in mind, right? Knowing you had two very winnable games at home this week against Iowa State and West Virginia before you went through a gauntlet at the end of your Big 12 conference schedule, to come out like that is just embarrassing. Like, and it's just not representative of what, the University of Texas stands for. It's not representative of what this athletic program stands for. It was embarrassing what we witnessed on the court last night. Like, I don't even have Longhorn Network. So it took me like four or five minutes to find a serviceable stream that wasn't cutting out, you know, every 30 seconds that I didn't have to, you know, click out a bunch of pop-ups, right? <laughs> like when I finally got the game on, we were down 10 points already, 12 to 2, 16 to 6, out the gate in a must-win game, essentially, you're down double digits. Like in a game that meant the world to you you come out with that type of performance you come out that flat with that type of energy you come out and lay an egg immediately that's embarrassing and that's disappointing and some people say well iowa state's the better team they're ranked 14th in the country it's the big 12 it's a gauntlet every night i don't care <laughs> like, i don't care about none of that i don't care about the rankings i don't care about ken palm i don't care about the big 12 i don't care about none of that <laughs> like when you watch the second half and you watch the way that texas was playing it's very obvious that if they would have played that way from the outset of the game that's a game they would have won last night but the problem last night and the problem for you know the entire season up until this point is the opponent has won at the game more than the texas longhorns more often than not last night Iowa State just won at that game more than Texas did. And that's why they won it, right? So I'm not going to give Texas credit for winning the second half. I'm not going to give Texas credit for fighting to the end or give Texas credit for making it look close and, you know, making great adjustments in the second half. That was embarrassing, right? Like if you would have came out and played that way in the first half, we wouldn't even be talking about a loss today, right? Embarrassing performance last night. If you look at it in the first half, Texas only scored 19 points. That has to be some type of record at the 40 acres, right? Did not make a single three-pointer in the first half. Had nine turnovers, and our three starting guards, Kendall Weaver, Max Acemas, and Tyrese Hunter, combined for zero points in the first half. It didn't matter what you were going to do in the second half. You were already down 17, and that was just too big of a hole to overcome against a really good, well-coached team in Iowa State. And now it's hard to imagine Texas making the tournament without going six and two the rest of the way against West Virginia, Kansas, Kansas State, U of H, Baylor, Texas Tech, and both Oklahoma schools. Like I said, you have a gauntlet the rest of the way on your schedule in conference, and you needed a really good win at home against an Iowa State team. And this program came out and folded last night in embarrassing fashion. Now I'm going to talk about Rodney Terry, right? And this is in no way, shape, or form me saying he should be fired. He should even be considered for being fired. And this is no way in shape or form me trying to incite the Rodney Terry should be gone or should have never been hired base. Right. Because I don't agree with you at all. Right. So if that's how you feel, we are not in we are not in cohesion right now. Right. But Rodney Terry does deserve blame for last night. Right. He's the head coach. And, you know, when this team went on an elite, elite eight run or, you know, when they were playing really good basketball, we gave Rodney Terry credit. Right. 
So when things are going wrong, he is the figurehead. He is the head coach. He deserves blame, right? Rodney Terry has not been good enough in his first year at the University of Texas. And I love Rodney Terry to death, right? You know what I mean? They used me in his official content on the Texas basketball page, right? I can never say enough good things about Rodney Terry. So let me reiterate that again. Rodney Terry has not been good enough in his first year at the University of Texas. There is a standard that is set for this athletic program that is not being consistently represented on the court. There's an expectation of excellence that was set last year by Chris Beard and Rodney Terry last year that is not being consistently represented on the court. Once again, I do not think Rodney Terry should be fired. Once again, I don't think Rodney Terry should even be in consideration for being fired. But the fact of the matter is, in his first full year as the head coach at the University of Texas, he has not been good enough. And that performance last night that we saw against Iowa State is a direct reflection of Rodney Terry, and it's an indictment on Rodney Terry, at least thus far in his first year. And you add in the horns down fiasco, and it makes sense why a lot of fans are sour on Rodney Terry right now. And it's really hard for most fans to give him the benefit of the doubt, right? So I'm not saying you shouldn't feel the way you feel about Rodney Terry. I'm not saying you're not entitled to your opinion. I'm just simply saying he does not agree. But where we can all come to common ground, right, whether you think he should have the job or not, is that he has not been good enough in his first year at the University of Texas. That should be the consensus. Now, what I will say is I'm a big proponent of, you know, I'm a big supporter of actually blaming the players, right? And not just being lazy and blaming the coaches, right? Because when you looked at that game last night, to me, the biggest thing that jumped out is just the team isn't good enough, right? Yes, Ronnie Terry is going to get blame and he deserves blame, right? But to me, it's lazy to just say, oh, fire Rodney Terry when your second best player cannot make a three-pointer at all. Your third best player in 33 minutes does not score a single point. What is Rodney Terry supposed to do? Bench Tyrese Hunter. For who? Literally, for who? Right? So it's like, yes, we're going to blame Rodney Terry, and he deserves blame. But at the end of the day, this team isn't good enough, and the players have to be better. But (laughs) over halfway through the season, I'm not sure the players are capable of being better, right? When you looked at last year's roster, I mean, look at this. This was your entire rotation. You could count on all eight of these players, especially at the end of the season, to make plays and be plus players for you, winning players for you night in and night out. Marcus Carr, Timmy Allen, Serge Abari Rice, Dylan DeSue, a better version of Brock Cunningham, Tyrese Hunter, Dylan Mitchell, and Arterio Morris. That was your entire rotation last year. This basketball team was stacked. This year, in terms of players you can count on night in and night out to be plus players, winning players for this program, Max Aismas. Dylan DeSue, and that's where the list stops, right? You could say Kendall Weaver with his effort and rebounding, but that doesn't move the needle enough for Texas to beat the best teams in the country or the best teams in this conference, apparently. It's Max Aismas and Dylan DeSue or bust literally every night. So like I said, we can blame Ronnie Terry and he deserves blame, but be honest with yourself and just say this Texas basketball team is not good enough. This roster is not good enough, and it's nowhere near as competitive as it was last year. Now I want to talk about Tyrese Hunter specifically. And I really appreciate, you know, what he did his freshman year at Iowa State, winning freshman of the year in the conference. He was one of the best young guards in the conference. I still vividly remember the NCAA tournament game against uh, LSU where he had like eight threes. I remember betting on LSU in that game and Tyrese Hunter just blew him off the court, right, with his shooting, right? And I was so excited when, you know, Chris Beard and his staff were able to go poach, you know, Tyrese Hunter from Iowa State and come to the University of Texas. But in the two years at the University of Texas, He has not shown us what he showed in year one at Iowa State. And for this version of this Texas basketball team in 2023 going into 2024 to compete, Tyrese Hunter was going to have to take a huge step forward and be a legitimate third option for Texas. That's why you did a full court press in the offseason to get Tyrese Hunter to come back, right? Because his experience and his talent level at the guard position was supposed to take this Texas program to the next level this year. And for the better part of two seasons since he's been here at the 40 Acres, we've seen nothing but offensive inconsistency and timidness when he has the ball in his hands. When he is shooting or going to the hole, he rarely makes it, right? And when he, you know, all the other times, right, he's scared to shoot or just passes the ball, right? Most of the time he's just standing around doing nothing, not moving the needle for this Texas basketball program. And, of course, you remember the Gonzaga game last year where he had 26 and went off, or the Baylor game a couple of weeks ago where he scores the game winner and has 20 points. Like every once in a while, Tyrese Hunter will give you a game like that. 
But for the most part, and for the better part of two seasons, we're seeing games like we saw last night, where when we need Tyrese Hunter the most, he's a no-show, right? His social media handles are walking bucket. Show me that you're a walking bucket. Because for two years at the University of Texas, I haven't seen it. And to be at home in a game with colossal implications regarding your season against your former team, you go 0 for 8 and score zero points in 33 minutes. That's just flat out ridiculous. And most of the misses were bad, too. It's not like he's just missing tough shots, layups, wide open threes, air ball and jump shots, block shots at the rim. He had three turnovers and zero points. And for some reason, the turnovers always seem to be crucial. Crucial turnover at the end of this game. Crucial turnover at the end of the U of H game in regulation where Texas does not have the opportunity to take the last shot, right? And maybe get out of there without even having, without even having to go to overtime. So, you know, I, I'm i a big, like I said, I'm a big supporter of blaming the players, right? And, you know, it's hard to say, you know, Rodney Terry could have done more in that game last night when his second best player in Max Aismas can't make a three and Tyrese Hunter in 33 minutes did not score a single point. Like, you can't even get to the free throw line and give us a point? Like, you can't find a way to wheel in a basket? You're missing layups, airballing shots? And you're supposed to be the third best player on this basketball team. Like I said, be honest with yourself. The team is just not good enough because we're relying on a player like Tyrese Hunter night in and night out, who in 33 minutes can score zero points with your season practically on the line. Now I want to talk about Dylan Mitchell. And I think offens offensively, he's fine, right? I know a lot of fans are frustrated with Dylan Mitchell and his offense, and I get why, right? But he wasn't a knockdown jump shooter last year, right? He was a player that scored all of his points around the rim. It was very ambitious to think that after one offseason, he was going to come back and be a knockdown jump shooter, right? So I think offensively, he's fine, right? He scored 10 points last night. That's really all you can ask from a player like Dylan Mitchell, who has a limited bag offensively, right? But his ineffectiveness outside of the paint does create spacing issues for this basketball team. So even though he gave us 10 points, you know, last night, which is all you can ask for him, the fact is he makes it harder for everybody on the offensive end of the ball because he doesn't create any space. Right. We saw in the BYU game. Right. Like they put it on front street when they just didn't guard him at all. And they just started triple team and Max Aismas and Dylan DeSue. Right. There's so much pressure on Max Aismas and Dylan DeSue, partly because there is no spacing around them. Right. Because they're the only two players on this basketball team that can consistently knock down a jump shot. Right. And what Dylan Mitchell lacks on offense, he's supposed to make up for on defense and with his rebounding. And that has not been the case. So Dylan Mitchell has shined at times. But frankly, over the last two years and especially this season, when he was supposed to be in a bigger role, he just has not been good enough. Right. So when we look at this basketball team, they're not talented enough. They don't shoot well enough. They don't rebound well enough. They don't defend well enough to compete at a high level. And now the NCAA tournament looks like a long shot period with eight games to go. Texas practically having to go six and two in those games and all eight games being very tough games in the gauntlet of the Big 12 Conference. So a very embarrassing loss last night. Everybody deserves blame. Top down, Rodney Terry, the entire staff and all of these players who put on that type of performance last night being on the bubble of the NCAA tournament. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Locked On Longhorns, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hopefully I'm in a better mood tomorrow.